right, good evening, everyone. I'll call this meeting of the Littleton Planning Commission of January 8th, 2024 to order at 6.30 p.m. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Chair Reynolds. Here. Vice Chair Almond is absent. Commissioner Neely. Commissioner Coronado. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Radulovich. Present. Commissioner Santana. We do have a quorum. All right, are there any changes to the agenda? Can we accommodate uh, Commissioner Coronado moving to another station? It appears his microphone is not functional. Thank you for tolerating that technical difficulty. If you can, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And just for the record, a report that uh, Commissioners Neely and Santana arrived at 6.32 p.m. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, seeing no changes to the agenda, the agenda is approved as presented. We do have uh, one set of minutes to be approved. I'll take a motion and a second to approve the December 11th, 2023 meeting minutes of the Littleton Planning Commission regular meeting. Uh, I move to approve based on the clerk's certification the December 11th, 2023 regular meeting minutes of the Littleton Planning Commission. Second. Motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Coronado. Uh, clerk, could you please open the voting system? The vote is six in favor, the motion carries. All right. Thank you. This is the time on the agenda for public comment. Uh, if you wish to address the board under public comment, please sign in at the public speaker form before the call to order for the meeting. I do have the public speaker form. Public comment is an opportunity to express opinions regarding issues that are not a part of the public hearings on tonight's agenda. A separate opportunity will be provided for comments on the proposed uh, resolution regarding the prohibition of retail sales of certain domestic animals. So this is the time for comments other than that topic. Each speaker is limited to three minutes and we expect comments to be civil. For your information, the board is not able under Colorado Open Meetings Law to discuss, comment, or take action at this meeting on issues that are raised by public comment that are not a part of tonight's agenda. I do have one person signed up for public comment, Pam Chadborn.
Happy New Year, Planning Commission. My name is Pam Chapborn. I live a block and a half from here. So um, I want to let you know about meetings coming up. Littleton City Council on January 16th is having a study session following in their regular meeting, which includes the ULUC amendments coming up in the design the future process. Let me tell you something. You folks haven't discussed that, and you're the Planning Commission. I, as a citizen, and I, with my professional background, expect the Planning Commission to have had input to those topics. I don't believe you did. And that is a fundamental deficiency and defect in our city government and management. Because our management should set up a schedule for our boards and committees to work together with each other, develop advice to the council, and then you come to the council to report that. I'm gonna tell you what's wrong is for you to show up at city council and expect them to tell you from above what to do. They are not the experts. Our original charter recognized that. You're selected for some knowledge and interest in planning you should be working with during the year. And our management should arrange for that to happen. Transportation mobility board, so we integrate street usage with uh, uh, zoning maps. And we saw that blown out of the water at Lumen on mineral. You should also work with Historic Preservation Board because the character and the value and the quality of the city of the future is determined by historic preservation. And the zoning map needs to protect those areas that need that protection. So those, at minimum, are two of the coordinations that should be worked during the year by our staff and our management for you to work with other boards and commissions to develop input about those policies. Then you meet with city council and value added is that you tell city council what you've learned, the other boards and commissions are aligned with you or at least knowledgeable about what you've worked out. And that's the way it should work. And in my last 35 seconds, I'm gonna tell you, the ULUC is destructive. I think we've proven that at this point and so there are some things I want. I want administrative approvals changed back to public hearings. The public needs to weigh in more. There has been a major disagreement by the public with decisions that the city has made. And that indicates to me that the ULUC has the wrong stuff in it and we need to get rid of those administrative approvals and get back to public hearings. We've got to change parts of the zoning map back to the previous zoning and have phased implementation and we need city-focused approval criteria added back. Uh, thanks for your consideration. Please consider this. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak regarding something not on the agenda, but who did not sign up this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next section of the agenda, general business. We have no general business items this evening. We do have, under public hearing, one public hearing. PC Resolution 02-2024, recommending approval to City Council amendments to Title 10 of the Littleton City Code regarding the prohibition of retail sales of certain domestic animals, that is, dogs and cats. So for those of you who have not participated in these sorts of hearings, we'll start with the staff presentation and then open it up for public comment after the conclusion of the staff presentation. If people have questions during the public comment portion of the hearing, uh, we will collect those and uh, staff will be able to respond to those if they come up. With that, I will segue into the staff presentation, please. Thank you. So good evening, commissioners. For the benefit of the public, my name is Atasi Titlow. Oh, it is on, yes. For the benefit of the public present here tonight, my name is Atasi Titlow. I'm a senior assistant city attorney with the city attorney's office. I still can't hear. Sorry. I'll yell. <laughs> 
For the benefit of the public present here tonight, there we go. Uh, my name is Atasi Tutlo. I'm a senior assistant city attorney with the city attorney's office. I generally advise planning, um, historic preservation board, the community development department, public works, along with other land use matters. And so here you see my blue healer and my Huskeranian, uh, Quigley and Kimber. I just want a disclaimer. These cute pictures are not intended to sway your decision making at all tonight. I just needed to fill some space in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, tonight I will be presenting a draft ordinance uh, to the Commission for Review and Consideration, the prohibition of retail pet sales, dogs and cats. And tonight here I have Terry Whitmore, who is a senior planner with the Community Development Department as well, who will be assisting me any, in any questions, concerns, or comments that you may have. So for tonight's agenda, I'll go briefly, I'll, I'll briefly talk about the background and the criteria. I'll also discuss the current code and proposed amendments to Title 10. And then I'll also end with staff recommendations. And during the staff recommendation period, I will discuss some comments and questions that I received from the commissioners over the weekend and respond to those at that time. So in May of 2023, a commercial permit was applied for by the owner of a building on West Bellevue Avenue for tenant improvements and a change of use for this new tenant. And the proposed use was that and is that of a pet store with retail sales. The building is currently within the corridor mixed district, which allows for retail repair, sales and personal services. And this use category allows for the sale of pets. As far as the current application, a business license has been issued by the city and a commercial permit is pending. There's information that was requested, but to my knowledge, I, don't, I do not believe that that uh, information that was requested has been submitted as of yet. Based on our internal track it system as of last week, there hasn't been any movement on the case since August of last year. Currently, there are no other pet stores within the city limits, but there may be some in the greater Littleton jurisdiction which aren't uh, subject to our rules and regulations. As the commissioners know, and you know, council members um, have are probably personally aware that we are frequently contacted about businesses or issues that are not within our city limits. But to date, we do not have any pet stores. There are other municipalities that have passed similar ordinances. These are um, just a few of them: Aurora, Alma, Breckenridge, Dillon, Eagle, Minturn, Superior, and Vale. I believe that uh, the commissioners received an email earlier today that had a few additional municipalities that have passed prohibitive ordinances. So given the most, uh, given the most recent permit application, there has been a renewed effort by animal welfare advocates and other concerned citizens to call for some type of prohibition or regulation. Additionally, many have contacted the city uh, prior to this permit application requesting some type of local prohibition. In October of last year, City Council considered three options uh, during a study session to discuss this very issue. The first was to maintain status quo, meaning uh, our current code language does allow for the retail sale of pets, um, including dogs and cats. And so to maintain the status quo would be to not revise anything within uh, Title 10. The second consideration option that was presented was to prohibit pet sales outright. And the third, was to consider regulation, meaning some type of business licensing or conditional use permit. So for the prohibition of pet sales outright, the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act, which passed a few years ago, and I'll talk about in the next few slides, authorizes the city to enact an ordinance that would prohibit the retail sale or offer of any dogs or cats. For business licensing, um, such as sexually oriented businesses, the city needs to be a little bit more careful in terms of how we would regulate. Now staff did look into how dogs and cats could be sourced, the number of dogs or cats that you could have, the requirements on how long a pet could stay within a cage, the size of the cage. I mean, you could really go further and further into details on this type of regulation. I mean, it's never ending, um, but we are not aware of any local jurisdiction that actually regulates by using a business, business licensing model. Further, without, um, well, based on, the, based on the discussion at City Council, uh, City Council study session in October, Council wanted to hold off on the option of business licensing due to staff resourcing and, and, and enforcement, really, um, without, and further, without getting into too many of the legalities. 
there are concerns with the Commerce Clause and regulating interstate type of sourcing for pets, uh, for dogs and cats. Conditional use was also researched. Unfortunately, how our current code is written, it is not well suited for pet stores. It talks about traffic, yes, um, location, neighborhood impacts. However, there would be additional criteria that we would want to include for a conditional use permit. Um, given all of the information presented to City Council at that study session in October, City Council wanted to explore number two, which is a prohibitive pet sales, pet sales ordinance. Additionally, in terms, um, in terms of amending the number of pets, this was a really a line item reference by Council to review this provision as there was the potential that the number three may seem archaic. Um, and so I'll talk about this uh, provision here in, a, here in a little bit. But all in all, City Council directed staff to bring forth an ordinance prohibiting the reta retail sale of pets, uh, specifically dogs and cats, and to amend the number of household pets that would be allowed. So section 1094.3 of the ULUC authorizes our city council to request a text amendment. And per our code, this draft ordinance is being presented to the commission for approval, approval with conditions or denial based on the consideration of community needs. So it, it is the opinion of staff that this criteria has been met for two, for two reasons. The first is the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act. It was enacted a few years ago, um, and it was, it was enacted really to provide for transparency on the sourcing of dogs and cats sold in pet stores, meaning purchase price, uh, transparency of purchase price, um, transparency on federal and state license numbers, and also to allow for information to be posted on breeder violations. And so this, <clears throat> when this was enacted a few years ago, this uh, shows that our legislature was very concerned with transparency in the sourcing of animals and for the protection of our consumers. And the second reason um, that staff believes that this criteria has been met is really the comments, questions, concerns that have been directed to city staff uh, in the past few years uh, within public comment. And so in April of last year, the city manager's office raised the issue to city council regarding the potential of a pet ordinance of some sort, uh, whether it be prohibition or whether it be regulation. And the mayor and the council members at that point in time had received a dozen, maybe more emails from concerned citizens regarding some type of prohibition. At the time, our city attorney also indicated that um, this issue comes up every few years, but really until now there hasn't been the actual realization of some type of pet store being within the city limits. Uh, Colorado Springs did review a pet ordinance, I believe mid last year, they did decide to um, reject the ordinance and then I believe Lafayette also entertained a prohibitive ordinance and my understanding is that they tabled it for more, more discussion. So during that April 2023 study session with council, um, city council requested to conduct, uh, requested that the city manager's office conduct a little bit more public outreach to gauge citizen and community concerns in a public setting, which did occur. Um, I believe it was May 2nd or maybe the other meeting in May that uh, during the public invited to be heard session, several members of the public did come forward to discuss the need for a prohibitive pet ordinance. And I must apologize, I don't have any written documentation of the comments at that point in time. Um, it's just line items in our agenda, but generally the comments regarding the request centered on inhumane treatment, horrendous living conditions, burdening customers with vet bills from sick and unhealthy pets, uh, in-store financing with high interest rates, and then mixed breeds being sold at purebred prices. And the, these are just some of the con comments and concerns that came up during that May public invited to be heard session. So based on the study session in April of last year, the public comments in May of last year, and then October of last year, um, council's direction, city staff put together proposed uh, amendments to Title 10. And so our current uh, code does not contain any type of prohibition within the ULUC on the retail sale of pets and dogs. In fact, the retail sale would fall under retail repair sales and personal services. And it's further defined um, as an example within 10.12.2 under sales oriented uses. That is the example of selling pets. 
and so it would fall under um, that particular section. As, just as a reminder, the application that was submitted is under the corridor mixed district, and so it would be permitted in this instance. So the proposed text ordinance would be under agricultural and animal oriented uses, a new section D. And you can see that it is added in a red line there. Pet store for sale of dogs and cats only. The sale, offer for sale, auction, barter, donation, or other transfer of a dog or cat is prohibited. And just as a side note, I will touch upon the other red line rescue shelters here in a few slides. The land use matrix would also be updated. And you can see in the red highlight, it would be a uh, broad prohibition across the board for every single district. So what exceptions would we allow? So the pro prohibition would allow exceptions that are in line with the Pet, consumer, Pet Store Consumer Protection Act. Pet stores may sell an animal if it is obtained from an animal rescue shelter, a kennel, or from a foster. There would be additional conditions. Um, the name must be posted and documentation of the source of the animal must be kept for three years after any sale for enforcement purposes. And then secondly, um, another exception would be that a person or a business who transfers any type of dog or cat would be allowed if that dog or cat was bred and reared on that person's uh, premises or their business, and so this would, this would be for single breeders. So what about rescue shelters? Just kind of circling back. Um, well, why rescue shelters? Currently, we do not have a definition in our code for rescue shelters, and the current code does not either specifically allow for or prohibit rescue shelters, at least none that I myself was able to find or our deputy director. And so this addition to the matrix um, is to clearly allow for them with the special, same special provisions of the veterinary clinic oops, um, or hospital with animal boarding. And so that's why it would be added as a red line within that section. And then the last substantive change would be uh, with regard to the number of household pets. And so in October, council direction was to survey other municipalities and raise the number of indoor pets. And so this chart summarizes some of the uh, local jurisdictions around here. I won't go through each one of them, but generally for Littleton, it would right now, the current code says three dogs, cats, ducks, or rabbits, or some combination thereof. The exceptions would be any, uh, any of the animals that are under six years, six months old, which would account for litters being born, laboratory animals uh, for scientific research, or vets. And the recommendation here is to increase from five to three. Um, I will be honest and let you know that this number is really just an average based on what we surveyed and, you know, this change, if it needs to be changed, is completely at the discretion of the Planning Commission after discussion. Uh, I am not aware of the reasoning behind why, behind why some of these other municipalities enacted their numbers, um, but in terms of Littleton, this language was pulled from our land use code prior to the adoption of the 2021 ULUC, and so this was actually there prior to 2021, and it was last revised in 2010 from our records. So as a result of the proposed amendments, we would also need uh, we would also need to clean up a few items to close some of the gaps that would be created. We would have to add definitions to section 10, 1022, one of them being animal rescue organization or rescue shelter, and then the second would be pet store. Another cleanup amendment would be to revise the definition to sales oriented uses. Specifically, as I mentioned, sales-oriented uses gives the example of allowing um, the selling, leasing, or renting of a, of a pet. Um, here, we added some red lines to exclude the retail sale of dogs and cats from pet stores. Pets meaning, you know, would still allow for birds, ferrets, gerbils, hamsters, whatever fish, um, whatever else falls under that category. Another uh, error, as we were going through the code, we realized that there was a reference to 10.2.3.2 with regard to vet clinics. That was an error. 
um, vet clinics are not allowed within downtown districts, and so this was just being removed to kind of clean up the code while we were in the land use matrix. And so staff's recommendation is for Planning Commission to recommend approval to City Council of the draft ordinance prohibiting the retail sale of pets, specifically dogs and cats. And so um, prior to taking questions, I wanted to address a few questions that I received over the weekend um, and to discuss them at this time. And so I'll apologize, I'm paraphrasing some of these questions and comments that I received, um, just because some of them were pretty lengthy. Um, but for time purposes, uh, the first question I received was, did the city consider addressing this prohibition purely through business licensing similar to how Littleton manages sexually oriented businesses? And so I believe I answered that prior to, but yes, over the past uh, six to eight months, the city attorney's office did some pretty extensive research just on the legalities behind regulating a business, a, a pet store business. And um, we looked at business licensing, we looked at pot potential conditional use permits. And during the October study session, city council felt that this would be a he heavy lift in terms of current staff resources and enforcement uh, issues. Additionally, and without going into too much privilege detail, during, during our research, legal issues did pop up with regard to the potential of violating the Commerce Clause and regulating interstate type of items, goods um, over state lines. I'm happy to discuss that more in a privileged setting if you do have follow-up questions. Um, but these were, uh, these were either four or five memos that just went back and forth on you know, what we could do in terms of, of regulation. As I mentioned earlier, you can really go down the rabbit hole on what you can and cannot regulate. And so it was uh, any type of regulating ordinance would face, face greater scrutiny. The second question I received, and this is actually a compilation of questions, uh, is the three pet limit creating an issue today? Can we keep regulations similar to other municipalities where dogs are capped at three, or potentially keep a dog limit for smaller lots or zone districts? In contrast to that question, another commissioner made a remark that maybe five total pets may be too low of a number, um, considering that our code allows for six hens. And you know, given that our chickens considered separately from other pets. And so, I am not aware personally of any issues from either planning or code enforcement uh, on the number of pets. However, this was made, like as I, as I mentioned, it was just a line item reference made by a council member saying, hey, let's take a look at this number. It seems that it might be archaic. I recommend just given the varying opinions that you know, once a motion is placed on the floor that the commission discuss this number and potentially suggest alternatives if we wanna do, if we wanna cap by species, if we want to increase, if we want to decrease. Um, Whatever that, whatever that number may end up being. You know, I'm happy to direct an amendment, um, but this code language as far as the three dogs, cats, ducks, rabbits, whatever it may be, or combo thereof, it was here, I think, as far back as 2010 as far as my research could show. Thirdly, a recommendation was made to amend our land use matrix to allow for conditional use permits for vet clinics and rescue shelters within the neighborhood commercial districts. So currently our code allows for vet clinics and rescue shelters within the corridor mixed district. The comment was made that maybe we should allow for these vet clinics and rescue shelters to also be in the neighborhood commercial district um, as they are neighborhood serving businesses and would be appropriate for that district. So similar to the last question, you know, I believe that this is more suited for uh, discussion after a motion has been made and I'm happy to uh, help craft an amendment if the commissioners would like to add that, um, allow, allow for that use. I will caution that this is a little bit of a substantive amendment that may require further legal research um, by myself and then with planning staff, you know, so it may be some time before we come back with you just if there are any issues um, that do pop up. And then lastly, a request was made for more background on where this text amendment was coming from and the criteria by which the Planning Commission must make a decision if this was a City Council priority or request and can we be provided with pu prior public input on the topic. And so I believe I touched upon this earlier in our presentation that it started back in April of 2023, but you know, based on comments from the City Attorney, I, I guess this has been going on for a few years that it's just a cycle that it keeps popping up. Um, but now that we actually have the realization of a commercial permit, 
I think, you know, animal welfare advocates have expressed uh, more concerns. I do not, I have to apologize, I do not have written documentation on those comments, but it is recorded for the May 2nd, 2023 video. Um, and as a summary, several members of the public came forward at that time to highlight and state their concerns regarding the inhumane treatment of these dogs and cats, uh, sourcing of animals, high costs and fraudulent costs on unsuspecting customers. So with that being said, I will stop talking. All right, thank you. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we'll proceed into the public comment portion of the meeting. And the clerk will be delivering a sign-in sheet uh, for me to call names from and hopefully not terribly misinterpret the handwriting on the sheets. Everyone who wishes to speak will be given an opportunity to talk, even if you have not signed up. Um, as before, uh, please limit uh, comments to three minutes, and uh, the cl clerk will be managing a timer. I will open the public comment portion of the public hearing at 7.01 p.m. and start with the comment sheet. Uh, first up is uh, Cheryl Sane. Hi, and thank you for having me speak tonight. Actually, my name is Cheryl Sape. Um, I just wanted to go over what uh, the inhumane conditions are from where puppies that are sold in pet stores come from. And these pictures here in front are pictures of a very typical puppy mill. Can you guys see those? This picture really shows what the conditions in a puppy mill are. Puppies, and they're mostly the breeding parents, live in cages their entire lives 24-7. The puppies get out, but the parents do not. And they're, they're like massive puppy farms, um, commercial breeding facilities. Since 2019, over 23,000 puppies have been imported into the state of Colorado for sale in pet stores. Puppies sold in pet stores are mostly sourced from puppy mills. A responsible breeder would never put an eight-week-old puppy in a cage and sell it. Conditions in puppy mills are horrendous. Breeding mother and father dogs can live, like I was just explaining, 24-7, 365 in cages that are crowded with other dogs and are filthy from their own waste. Often made of wire, they injure the dog's feet as they get caught in the wire, and the wire also has rusted protuberances that also cause injury. The size of the cage is manda mandated by the Animal Welfare Act, which is um, enforced by the USDA, can be as little as six inches larger than the dog is in each dimension, hardly enough room for the dog to turn around. The dogs receive little vet care, healthy food and clean water are rare, they get no human socialization so that puppies born in this environment are at risk for behavior problems. It's like a human baby having no human interaction for the important first six months of life. And those, so these puppies can have a lot of behavioral issues. Puppies are also at risk of contracting contagious diseases, diseases in this environment with, uh, that have tens or hundreds of other dogs. Consumers unknowingly purchase cute puppies only, just, just only to discover a few days later that their new BFF has serious illness and often requires vet care and or hospitalization. Later, the behavior and congenital problems manifest. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Lauren Rombach. Good evening, I'm Lauren Rombach. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I have lived in the Littleton community since 1984. I've supported businesses in Littleton during that time and do not want to see stores selling puppies or kittens here. A total of 15 cities in Colorado have said no to the sale of puppies and kittens in pet stores, including on the Front Range, Fountain, Superior, Aurora, and most recently, Johnstown. They passed that. I believe it was in November, but the ordinance that went into effect for Aurora was effective October 1st, and none of these cities had pet stores operating in their cities, except maybe Fountains was a long time ago, but Fountain, I think, 
still has one, but all the other cities chose to say no to the cruel puppy mills. A franchise of the Puppy Palace, whose main store is in Glastonbury, Connecticut, was planning to open in Littleton at Federal and Bellevue. They decided not to open. Um, city Council sent me an email let me know that they were not planning to open, which is very good news. Pet store, supply stores and groomers are a positive addition to the community. Puppy selling stores are not a good fit. In Aurora um, in 2020, Pet City was shut down um, for delinquent tax payments. The owner owed 86,000 in back taxes. 45 puppies, six rabbits, nine hamsters, and 18 mice were removed from the store and taken to the shelter. This puts ex extra burden on taxpayers to cover the cost. So it's not a good thing. I think that was part of the reason that Aurora was amenable to a, an ordinance because they remembered this you know, terrible business. Um, I just wanted to add that, as Cheryl said, puppy mills are a factory farm for dogs. A large number of people that go to a pet star, store experience impulse buying. They see the puppy, they wanna buy the puppy, but they don't know that they're supporting puppy mill breeders. Um, one of the main outlets for selling puppy mill pu puppies are pet stores. One way to squeeze these large commercial breeders is to close access to their retail access through ordinances at the local level. So um, I'm asking you to pass this resolution because the more that we have in place, the more you know, puppy mill breeders will decline. And they are the, the breeders that could care less about the dogs and the, you know, the genetics, um, the longevity of the dog. They don't care about any of it. They're just breeding the dogs nonstop. So um, thank you for listening, and I hope that you guys support the resolution. Thank you. Next person signed up is Ellen Kessler. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. My name's Ellen Kessler. I've lived in Littleton for more than 30 years. I'm retired now from solar and wind energy. I want to tell you about Gus. He is a cane mastiff that was bought in a pet store in Southwest Plaza. From the moment he was brought home, he started experiencing skeletal issues and all kinds of other genetic issues. And my neighbor refused to believe that he came from a puppy mill because this pet store was so reliable. In other words, they lied to her. She spent nearly $5,000 in trying to get a life back for Gus. He had the most beautiful eyes, so, so full. He was euthanized when he was only a few years old. And granted, you know, larger dogs can live a lot longer than, a lot shorter time than that, but not, not three, four years old. And that's typical of a, a dog that may come from a pet store because pet stores rely heavily, almost exclusively, on puppy mills. You know, by, I won't define puppy mill again. Um, I used to be a volunteer for Colorado Humane Society and I watched them bust a puppy mill and all these dachshunds were brought in. So young, young animals, no teeth. A lot of them ended up being put to sleep because they were too far gone. So, you know, and I, one thing, in 2022, according to the Pet Animal Care and Facilities Act, otherwise known as PACFA, nearly 5,000 dogs were euthanized in Colorado last year. Of that 5,000, nearly 300 were puppies. That comes out to about 14 dogs who are euthanized every single day. Is this what you want? Banning pet stores in Littleton won't cure the problem, but it will send a clear message that their business is not welcome. There are about 15 cities in Colorado that have already realized this and have banned the sale of dogs and cats. There's close to 500 communities in the entire country that have banned 
the sale of pets and cats in the entire country of France has banned it. Littleton is such a darn fun place to visit and to live in. Please, let's keep it that way. Keep the pet stores out. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next person signed up is um, Mary Klepfer. Good evening. Um, my name is Mary Klepfer, and yes, you pronounced it right, which is very unusual. Thank you. Um, I am a Littleton city resident and have lived in the city now since 2017 and, and very proud to be a resident of the city. Um, I have to commend Ms. Titlow on her presentation. I also am an attorney by profession. And one of the reasons I was asked to come speak with some of my friends today, besides being an animal lover, is uh, I guess they thought an attorney might have some sway. Let's hope you have some sway tonight. Um, the one thing I did want to bring up, which I think you heard from some of the stories, I start looking at it a little more black and white, is this issue of what happens in the stores and how consumers are really misrepresented. I'm sure I have grandchildren now, but my children were little, and we'd go to a pet store, and you'd see the little puppy. And I don't think I all realized then really how they came to be there. We did end up having dogs and cats and always went to a breeder or went to a rescue shelter. And so you think these groups have gone away, but they haven't. So one of the way to stop it, and again, it's not Littleton's place to do that really, but I think it's the place where we all wanna um, do the kindest thing and the best thing for our community. Um, I just want you to be aware that um, stores, and I, I can't say everybody, but I've seen this commonly with some friends who fell for that, I'm gonna get a cat or a puppy from a pet store. They misrepresented the health, they misrepresent purebred, and again, if you're just walking through a store and you're just not thinking about those things, and you kind of make these snap judgments, and then who gets left with all the pets, and you heard about the euthanization and so forth that happens. I think um, it's just something to put the health and welfare of the animals ahead, and I really respected uh, Ms. Titlow's presentation, to be honest. I had gone online to see what the amendment was, and you did a really good job. Um, so anyway, I would encourage you all um, to vote in favor um, and, and bar retail pet stores from selling dogs and cats in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Janice Jones. Hello. I'm Janice Jones. I've been in a Littleton residence since 1994. I am strongly in favor of a ban on the retail sales of puppies and kittens. Towns consistently put restrictions on businesses when it's for the greater good. We don't sell cigarettes or alcohol to people under 21. We don't allow porn stars to be in certain areas. This resolution is less restrictive because again, People can still get animals of their choice from a reputable breeder, not just in a pet store, where we know with 100% certainty based on information from the USDA that all pet stores selling puppies and kittens get their animals from cruel puppy and kitten mills. Please, I, I beg you, to vote in favor of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sally Cervedio is up next. Good evening. Disease. Um, talk about puppy mills disease-ridden places because you have a hundred or more dogs all caged together. It's going to happen. Okay, so when a pet store says, no, we don't get sick puppies, they do. It's just logical. And the one thing that happens that we don't talk about, puppy mills sending those dogs to the pet shops, those dogs get antibiotics, a shot, hoping if anything they have anything, it'll cure it. But here's where it caused the problems. 2011, Camp Leobacter Jejuni in Florida, that is a zoonotic that goes to people too, having a horrible outbreak 
It's still around. CDC got involved, traced it back to a pet shop. 2017 in Westminster, Colorado, they had an outbreak of parvo, which is deadly to puppies, 80% die. And in 2019, same place, puppies and stuff in Westminster, had an outbreak of distemper. 2019, we have a huge outbreak in Iowa with the canine brucellosis. That's also zoonotic. People were getting that, CDC involved again. And now we're up to 2023, and we have a canine respiratory illness going around. I cannot say that it came from pet stores, cannot say that it came from breeders, because they don't know where it's from. They don't even know exactly what it is yet. They're not even saying if it's zoonotic or not. They can't say that yet. So when these people get your puppies home that you love, and here you find they have something, doesn't show up right away, your other dogs get it. They go to the dog park. They go to the vet. They go to the groomers. So we're spreading it through our community. And then we don't hear or think about, you could get worms from your cute little puppy. You can get salmonella from your little puppy. There's a lot of things that these puppies are bringing into the community to the people and the other pets. Okay, thank you. Thank you. James Hayes. My name is Jim Hayes. I've lived in Littleton since uh, 2017. Uh, and I'd like to take a look at just the impact on surrounding businesses of uh, puppy mills. Uh, Perfect Pets in Centennial has had protesters there since 2014. And obviously the other stores in that uh, mall uh, don't like to see protesters uh, anywhere in that, that area. Uh, it also negatively impacts uh, the other businesses, uh, not just in that mall, but in that whole surrounding area. Uh, pet supply stores and groomers uh, do have a positive impact on the uh, community. Uh, a good example is Zoe's Place, which is uh, in downtown Littleton, and they do very well by selling only pet supplies and food without having to sell any of the puppy mill pups or cats. So uh, I think that uh, uh, I'd like to have you uh, vote to uh, back this uh, proposition. Thank you. Thank you. The next person signed up is uh, Bonnie Rogerson. I'm going to ask first if you can hear me. I have a very bad cold. <laughs> okay, um, I am Bonnie Rogerson. I am a Littleton resident. Um, without selling puppies, stores can make an excellent profit. They make more per square foot than many stores selling puppies. Um, there's no valid reason, knowing what we know about cruel puppy mills, for any store to sell puppy mill dogs, keeping the horrific puppy mill industry in business. For every small business person with a pet store can make an excellent living from selling pet supplies, not live puppies and kittens. Therefore, I strongly am, am strongly in support of a ban on the retail sale of puppies and kittens. Thank you. Thank you, and Pam Dickerson. Hi, uh, did you receive this paper? I trust you did. I wrote this, not that the thoughts are original, but this is how you can tell with 100% certainty that the puppies that come from pet stores originated from puppy mills that came from parents where no health checking was done you know, to AKC registered dogs, you breed them regardless of their health. And how can you tell? The answer is in this paper. Most people don't know this unless you've been into the purebred business in some way. I've had rescue dogs, I've had purebred dogs. There is a national database. AKC started it. It lists every AKC breed and the recommended health tests. Reputable breeders, 
look at those health tests, have them all conducted on the mother and father potential breeder dogs. They breed only to each other if they have good health characteristics. In addition, they know who they're selling their puppies to. And they keep up with that dog for the rest of its life calling, oh, every year or two, how's your puppy? Did you have any illnesses that I should know about? Because I want to take that into account in my future breeding program. I get statistics from the state of Colorado and from the Chick Canine Health Information Center database. To date, we have not found a single commercial breeder that did those health tests and listed them on the national database, which is available to all of us to see. That should tell you with certainty. These pet stores are selling puppy mill dogs that are not bred for health or longevity and the results land in our laps. I get a dog that has health issues, poor dog, poor mama, spending money on the dog. Dog doesn't have as long a life as a dog bred for health. So that is why retail sales of puppies and kittens should be shut down. The linkage from the breeder to the buyer is missing. The health tests are not done. It's a terrible business but people can always go directly to good, reputable breeders and get the dog of their choice. Or go rescue a dog, either way. I'm in favor of both. I am not in favor of pet stores that sell dogs that are not bred for health. And that's all of them. Thank you. Thank you, that concludes everybody who had signed up. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak regarding this item? Hi, my, my name's Thomas McBride, and I moved to Colorado in 2020, and for two and a half years, I thought I lived in Littleton. My mail comes to Littleton, I shop in Littleton, I bank in Littleton, then I got a ballot for the Denver mayor and realized I'm on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> but um, one of the things you mentioned in your presentation was... Um, getting sourcing from rescues and all. I just read a, an extensive article this morning about rescues and they are finding some pet stores are trying to license themselves as rescues or the rescues are buying dogs from puppy mills to resell or they charge a rescue fee. So um, if you would be interested in seeing that I see, could see about getting you a copy. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak regarding this item? Yes? I'm Pam Chadbourne. I live a block and a half from here, and I uh, grew up here, so you can judge that that's a long time. Um, I wanted to mention a few things uh, based on what I heard. Uh, first off, I'd like to make sure that any input to the commission is included in a revised public packet that's posted, uh, just an administrative thing. Second, I appreciate the work by the advocacy group. It's good to know that people are watching this and keeping an eye out for the data. Um, I'm going to point out that Littleton doesn't need the tax income from these pet stores. Uh, we just don't need it. So. Uh, it doesn't threaten, sometimes there's an economic analysis that wasn't done, but we don't need that income. And clearly sales of living creatures are not appropriate under repair sales and personal services as a business. That's just not the right place. Um, I'm going to recall, and you may have heard versions of this, that chickens and bees evoked some of the largest turnout and strongest input uh, to the city. Uh, in the discussion of the land use code. And uh, regulation of chickens and bees affects your neighbors, so do um, puppies and cats. And so, you know, clearly that's not the same as just regulation of business. Um, this should be regulated differently. Um, I'm also going to mention, I do not remember the news thing specifically, but there are charges against an animal rescue uh, place now. And, uh, but at least the state has the ability to investigate that. 
the rules regarding business, as the attorney pointed out, are very different. And so perhaps cities really need to step up and take extra action about this until greater, wider, broader regulation occurs. Um, I also want to mention about cats. Um, you may or may not know that the breeding of exotic cat species is something that's popular. And it takes three generations to breed true. And those first two generations are discarded animals. And so it, that's terrible too. And that's, I just want to mention something about cats, equal time or part time. Um, wanted to thank, again, I thought the attorney's work was very good, which has been previously mentioned, but I'm going to tell you, please do not add any ordinances like um, having it in the neighborhood district. You know why? For the same reason that the, you read the stuff about public comment, because that wasn't in the material that was offered to us, the public. And I guarantee you that neighborhood people want to weigh in about the number of extra pets next door to them. So the reason you shouldn't do those additions tonight about increasing the number for in neighborhood district is because you didn't warn the public. So no, please don't do that. But otherwise, please um, consider this. And I think it sounds reasonable without some of those amendments. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak regarding this item? Seeing no one rushing to the podium, I will close the public comment portion of the hearing at 7.27 p.m. and invite uh, members of the Planning Commission to ask questions of staff. I will start to my right, audience left. Hang on. Thank you, uh, Tassi and members of the public for coming out today. A lot of good information. Um, Atasi, you had a slide that starts, talks about exceptions. I guess one of my questions there was, I don't know if you can bring that up so the commissioners can see that. It's near the end of your presentation. It's the exceptions slide. Um, it says, the text on that slide says, but pet stores may sell an animal if it was obtained from an animal rescue shelter, rescue shelter, kennel, or foster. And on that, keep going. And right just before this, there are no exceptions. Just here we go. Exceptions. Oh, don't keep going. There it is. Uh, you can show the rest of that slide. Uh, it th is this is this actual language that we're proposing here? No, this is just a summary of the language that we're okay. proposing. Yes, I think when we when whenever we're talking about these things, it is really important to say may sell a dog or cat. Uh, in, in the other um, uses, we, we should be especially careful in this ordinance to just always say dog slash cat because we want to allow uh, pet stores to sell animals from all kinds, uh, gerbils, uh, skink, or wherever, whatever it is, a fish, without these requirements. So I just want to make sure that this isn't language for the ordinance, but whatever language is in an ordinance has to always say and dog, cat. With regard to the language, um, a pet store, if the dog or cat was obtained by the pet store from an animal rescue, organization, kennel, or fostering, and with regard to the conditions, the name of the animal rescue organization, kennel, or foster, ind foster individual must be posted in a conspicuous location on the dog or cat's enclosure. Yes. And so okay. we made sure to add yeah. dog or cat, dog or cat in those, yes. in those line items. I, I, I think it's really important that pet stores in general not feel like we're going after pet stores. Um, and there's a lot of different, there's a lot of variety of pet stores in here and in Inglewood. Um, that we should be very targeted in this if we're going to pass a, an ordinance like this. Uh, the slide that followed this a couple was the definition slide. Uh, that had um, 
the definition of a pet store here. And I, to me, that was a little confusing. Um, wanted to clarify keep going it's in it's red and we def we define there it is under pet store means a retail store establishment where dogs or cats are kept or sold to me if we're going to define a pet store it should be something like where animals are kept stored for sale or their supplies i mean most of the pet stores that we have today are actually the sales of pets are sort of an auxiliary element of what they're actually selling. You know, Lewis and Cluck will sometimes sell tins or chicks when Pete has chickens. Uh, pet size pet Supplies Plus sells scorpions, live ones for feed. Um, a pet store really isn't a retail establishment just where dogs are kept and dogs and so cats. So this, Commissioner, was written in the context of this specific prohibition. Um, when I, you know, I, I thought the same thing, and when I searched through our EUL, you see we actually don't use the phrase pet store anywhere. Um, it shows up zero for zero in your search and find. Mm -hmm. And so it was written specifically for pet store, but I understand what you're saying. And so, yeah. you know, I think we, we need perhaps two it. definitions. We need a pet store and a pet store with sale of cat and dogs. And... Um, because we're going to go use that definition in the table uh, where we allow or disallow. We're going to take away permits for the pet store for the sale of dog and cats. And that's like a, I wouldn't blend those two definitions if we're going to get into code. Okay. Um, again, I'm just trying to be very mindful about how we express to the community what we're targeting here and what kind of businesses we're going to continue to allow or allow in this in this zone. Um, I'll let you take those notes. Uh, then you, uh, I think it's following slide. We we look at the la the land use matrix, where um, the pet stores are permitted currently un under conditional use. If you want to bring that page up. In just the in the commercial mixed use, and um, I will I will fess up. I am the commissioner who wrote the e the message the email, asking why are we disallowing pet supplies or clinics animal clinics in the neighborhood commercial districts? We allow them in commercial mixed use under the current. Is it is it not going? There we go. It's just slow. There there we go. Um, It's a little bit after this. There we go. There we go. Okay. So quarter mixed use, NC and CM. So neighborhood commercial. Neighborhood commercial, for people who don't know, that's an area like Littleton Boulevard, the entire north side where you might find um, a liquor store today or... Uh, there's a new brewery out there. It's also most of Broadway. There's a lot of sections of Broadway corridor, which are neighborhood commercial. These are fairly, they're, they're meant to be neighborhood serving commercial areas. And I, I think that if we're gonna send this to council with a recommendation that this should be amended to allow uh, things like a pet store or a veterinary clinic in the neighborhood commercial. And I say that for a couple of reasons. One, I think that where these kind of stores serve individuals and families mo more than anything. And having close access, access to them on roads like Littleton Boulevard and Broadway is a, is a plus. It means you can walk there with your dog when they're sick uh, instead of having to get in a car if you live near one of these clinics. It's the kind of thing that that's exactly where we want um, a clinic. So I wondered, uh, it looks like you're changing the language. You're, you're adding a new category but the double dash that's under NC is for veterinary clinic without boarding. Was that just the existing table or did you actually change that? Only the, only the red lines are changes. Okay. Everything in black so is we existing. Would, if we wanted to send this to council allowing these kind of pet and clinic, veterinary clinics without boarding into the neighborhood commercial and downtown mixed use, which is another area around here where I think it'd be good. We would need to have an amendment to do that. OK, 
Okay, we can talk about that more later, but I just, that's the outline of what I was thinking about. Um, those are the only really technical questions I had before we have the open discussion. All right, thank you. Commissioner Neely, any questions? Uh, yeah, I had a question, um, just because this kind of seems uh, sort of on the periphery of, of a land use issue. And I just wanted to hear about the other municipalities that, that this is sort of following the same legal precedent of, you know, concerned citizen, city council, uh, land use code amendment, or are they sort of um, regulating dogs and cat sales in other ways? Um, I am from the jurisdictions that I listed that have enacted prohibit prohibitive ordinances. I'm not aware that they're regulating in any other form or fashion. My understanding is that this is just an outright prohibition in terms of land use. I'd have to I'd have to dig into the each of those individual ordinances to figure out what else they're doing as far as regulations go. But I'm not aware of anything else. But the law is landing in there. But it, but it's being regulated in their land use code. That I'm not aware of. I you know I'd have to dig into what section it is, what title it ends up being, what chapter. Um, and that's not research that uh, we did. I guess. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just concerned from like a, a legal precedent standpoint. If those seven people and these six, seven people get aligned on any number of issues, and uh, what, what does it say? We're a home rule municip municipality. What's the legal language there? Anything that's not a purview of state regulation. What was that? I guess just in any case, um, what's to stop us from banning anything we want under uh, the heading of a land use code? Well, specifically, we are authorized to enact this ordinance for, from the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act that was enacted a few years ago. And so within that, um, it, the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act allows for transparency, so there are already requirements on individuals or businesses selling those type of animals to post um, where the, the sourcing of the animal to go ahead and list the breeder and I believe it's violations that the breeder may have against them uh, for the past three years and so there are other requirements outside of that but one of the one of the biggest facets of that is that th of that act is that it allows municipalities to go ahead and undertake and authorize us to go ahead and put this ordinance into place prohibiting, outright prohibition on the retail sale of pets and dogs. And so we're authorized by statute to go ahead and do so. And so we can be uh, more restrictive, that's what the act says, we can be more restrictive than what the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act has put into place. And so, it's, so that statute is address specifically addressing pet sales. Yes. So that's, there's the legal precedent. So. So it can't just be anything Correct. that city council comes up with, brings it to us, we agree. There, there's, there's lots of background that's put into this. We, we did quite a bit of legal research just to make sure that we stayed within certain parameters because as I mentioned, regulations, business licensing regulations and conditional use permits, you start to get into really the weeds of that business and how they source, you know, nuisance, um, odor, smells, I mean, there's a lot of regulation that goes into it, and so we, I, I think it was about six to eight months, tons of legal research that went into what we can and cannot do, but, you know, with the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act, it, I mean, it very clearly states that we can be restrictive, and that's what City Council wanted to move forward with, um, or at least directed us to put together, given all of the enforcement issues with business licensing and regulation. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a that'd be a good piece of history to feed council, um, whether all the uh, everywhere else, all the other municipalities in Colorado are sort of following the same precedent and it's landing in their code, their land use code, rather than anywhere else. I know that there was there was one other question about how to regulate it, and I, I kind of was lost on uh, why we didn't want to do it that way. But I, I, I think. F getting precedent from those other cities would be um, 
would uh, lend a degree of comfort with, uh, with this decision. And I'm happy to go into um, some of the issues that we hit on regulation. A lot of it does uh, land on enforcement issues. Uh, would you like me to touch base or touch upon that? Yeah, that'd be okay. great. No, I mean, if it's not going to take a bunch of time. No, no, no. I, I, can, I can give kind of an overarching uh, viewpoint sure. of that. And so, you know, uh, I, I will be honest, I did put together some type of conditional use permit ordinance just to take a look at it. And when the deputy director and myself were reviewing it, you know, some of the regulations that we would put in there would state and local regulatory compliance, um, meaning that each dog or cat kept at the facility had to be up to date on vaccinations. Um, had to, be, you know, rabies, all of that sort of thing. Um, nuisances that the facility had to control odor, dust, noise, waste, drainage, security. Um, facility design, you know, special yards and areas for exercise, urination, those sorts of things. Um, pot potentially specific sanitary sewer requirements. The other thing was um, animal care. You know, each facility needs to be adequately staffed um, for direct care to the dog or cat, and that was with each of these, you know, the question came up, well, what does that mean in terms of enforcement? So, for example, you know, how many, how many cats or dogs could you have in one location? Well, does that mean one employee for four dogs and, you know, 300 plus cats? I mean, it was kind of a back and forth on where do you land. Um, sourcing, uh, you know, we, we talked extensively about sourcing, and I think a couple members of the public have already brought this up, is that the USDA, yes, does require breeders to be licensed, but are, do their regulations go far enough? And, and quite a few people and quite a few comments have indicated that they do not. And then there are also, you know, could we uh, enforce and require certification for breeders licensed by, uh, let's say, American Kennel Club, uh, American Canine Association, all breed registry, things like that, um, you know, blue ribbon or canine, uh, care certified, I believe it's through Purdue, Purdue University, and so it would be difficult, if near impossible, to proactively enforce that given our staffing resources. And so that was one of the reasons that, you know, uh, regulation would be very difficult um, to do. It, w it would be quite a bit, and then that was just kind of what we came up with at the very top level, but you know, we didn't even get into the details of how big the yard needed to be or how often these animals needed to be taken out and how you know, some of these pet stores would be able to adequately staff um, and have the proper amount of employees. Uh, and so there you started crossing into commerce clause, potential commerce clause violations, uh, privilege and immunities, and so it, it starts to get into constitutional law and, I get scared of that. <laughs> so just, just a few um, kind of, of the thought processes that went through in our legal research. Yeah, I guess just with, uh, sorry to kind of harp on this, but I, I guess the other thing that sort of scares me is, yeah, just other, other sort of uh, prohibitions following this sort of flow of, you know, you know this being a legal precedent for, for anything else, I mean, any other type of ban if, you know, this is not as heavy an issue as abortion, but like if we wanted to, if, if we somehow all got into alignment on that issue and we wanted to, and we, we put in no abortion clinics in a land use code, like how, how you know, that's, that's a weird analogy to make, but I just want to sort of, s it just seemed like a, a bit of a slippery slope kind of thing. Uh, and, and then this obviously is my area of expertise and it seems like there is a, a legal precedent with the statute Mm -hmm. But it just seems like um, for this to be put before planning commission, but I just want to—it just seems like a like a non-land use issue that I'm uh, making a vote on. Um, so I just wanted to see um, that uh, it has a legal precedent from the other cities. I guess is it. Uh, I guess no other uh, questions, but um, yeah, I, th I th just think uh, that clarification from the other cities is important. Commissioner Coronado. Well, uh, 
Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm a, a little naive on this subject. I haven't been in the market for a pet dog or cat for a, a while, and I'm a little skeptical about what I hear on the news and reading social media, but um, I have heard the horror stories about puppy mills, and I appreciate the public input. Uh, it's very, very informative. Uh, my first question was, well, um, what is a reputable um, breeder? Uh, and can't a store that sells um, pet cats and, and dogs be uh, coming from a reputable breeder? And, and how does um, not allowing them in the city of Littleton impact the ability of Littleton residents to obtain a, a pet dog or cat? Do they have to drive to Bennett or Kansas or something to find a reputable breeder and what kind of inconvenience and cost does that add to the, um, uh, the people of Littleton who want to adopt a pet and maybe, maybe they don't prefer to go through a, a rescue. Um, the last time we acquired a, a pet it was for my son and I, I remember driving at least an hour, it might have been to Elizabeth or someplace like that, and it was great. It was a farm, you know, you could tell they were raised reputably and so on, but it was very inconvenient <laughs> driving out there at night. Um, so I guess I'm concerned from a market uh, standpoint that we're limiting the market, so if, uh, if uh, there are not reput even reputable um, sales of, of pets in, allowed in Littleton, uh, which I understand that, that there may not be such a thing in a pet store. Um, do they go to Englewood or do they go to um, some other city that hasn't, you know, banned them to, to get those? So how does that affect the market? I have concerns about that. Um, if, um, let's see. Um, and then I guess a, a question more specifically to staff here is, um, why is this limited just to dogs and cats, as there are other household pets that I think were named in some of the other comparable ordinances in, um, in other cities, like um, I think there were uh, pet pigs, there were rabbits, um, um, goats, reptiles. What about horses and, um, and, and other types of things that we see in Littleton already? as pets, um, should, should this extend to encompass those as well? So to answer that specific question, um, you know, we are relying on the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act, which does give us that authority to enact a prohibitive ordinance, and that is very specific to dogs and cats only. Okay, all right. Um, and then, um, you know, I guess there, is there a possibility that a sort of market changer could come in? Are, that reputable breeder that sells through a storefront, um, like I remember when PetSmart came out, that was a, a new type of market changing type of, of place that um, maybe was reputable, maybe not, but is governed by business laws and the market and people um, trusting them to, you know, Sell, sell good products, um, we may be, I guess I'm concerned about unforeseen circumstances that might come as a result of this, and uh, uh, concerns from other commissioners too, you know, how is this a land use decision? I understand the, that this may be the only way to, <laughs> to prohibit um, improper or, um, or um, unethical sales of dogs and cats, and if that is the case, then I would support it, but um, those are my concerns, so I guess not so much a question, but a concern. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Miller. <clears throat> yeah, so thank you for the presentation and for uh, the public's participation this evening as well, thank you. Um, I had one question about uh, the exceptions, and uh, Commissioner Santana asked, uh, hit a couple of the points, but I think, I guess, I um, just want to make sure I understand. So if, um, if an existing store that sells animal feed and whatnot decides they want to sell, they can now sell pets if, they, if they're foster animals, is that, is that what I'm reading? Is that? So an existing pet store 
that just maybe sell supplies yep. and things like that, they, they decided to, they would, um, they could not sell animals that were outside of these exceptions. So it would so have to be for an animal rescue organization, kennel or foster. Okay, and then so how is that enforced? That's something that we would have to handle internally and come up with a policy. It would be likely through code compliance, um, but that's one of the issues that we had when we were discussing the regulation, like business licensing regulation aspect of it, as well as conditional use permit, is that there are enforcement concerns. And so that's one that, you know, um, documentation from the proof, uh, documentation showing the source of the animal would have to be kept and we would be, we would, the city would have the ability to go out and proactively uh, take check. a look at those records or if we received a complaint from a citizen saying, hey, we have concerns about this. They would they would be required by the by the ordinance to keep those records for I believe three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so yeah, so if somebody wanted to start selling rescue animals, they would just they would have to apply for is that a new license or something, business license or how does that? I believe so. Yes, because uh, it would be change in use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No further questions. Commissioner Radulovich. He can pronounce my last name right, so. <laughs> um, so, uh, first off, I'd like to say, I think, um, I'm kind of curious as to why we did not have a study session on this prior to this being presented to us. I think that would have uh, alleviated a lot of the questions that we're getting tonight, and um, I just think that in the future, we, 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 uh, we need something like that. that I know I, I look back at the council one, and um, I really think we, we would have benefited from this because many of these issues could have been handled prior to us having to make a judgment on something. Um, that's neither here nor there. As far as the uh, the, uh, the neighborhood commercial, um, I, I I would suggest that we talk about that on, when we do a ULUC update and not try and do it now because this is for the same reason that I just talked about because I think we need to discuss this further and have other input. I think that's a, a prudent way to go about it. Um, just a couple of things here. On line 67 of the ordinance, I'm working off the, the, the other copy, of course, because, but um, it, it says subsection A shall not apply to the following. So what is subsection A? Is that referring to kennel? Because that's what it would go back to in this? It's just a typo. It should be subsection one. Subsection one. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was, that was in there. Okay. Um, what? I almost don't see a point to the, the first item underneath that. The, you can sell foster animals. I, I don't. I, I don't think I have ever seen. I don't know if this is trying to cover what PetSmart does, but I think, from my understanding, PetSmart facilitates adoption on site, and they are they are they are not making money on it. They're not selling those animals. So this almost is, to a certain degree, creating a loophole for someone possibly. That that that. You know, you could you could say these things are coming from these particular, and you're going to get away with it for a little while until someone catches on to it. I. Personally, I, I, I kind of wonder if we should just get rid of this completely and have it be just a, a retail ban on, on sales of cats and dogs if we're, going to, if we're going to pass this. I don't understand why this is in here. Is, can, do you, can you shed some light on, as to why it would be there? I guess I'm not understanding your question as to what specific section is in here. Uh, it's it's the, the section that's basically the pet store a pet store if the dark cat was obtained from an animal rescue organization, kennel, fostering, or as long as the other, as long as the following met, which includes the documentation and the three years of, I don't understand why this is even in here. We're putting that in there uh, because there are additional conditions placed on the, the animal rescue organization, the kennel or fostering. There were some concerns highlighted in today's public comment that, you know, sometimes these pet stores may try and become, quote unquote, an animal rescue shelter, vice versa, things like that, where they may be fraudulent. And so the reason being is that, you know, they still need to meet the Pet Store Consumer Protection Act. Um, and it's in line with some of the requirements of the Pet mm -hmm. Store Consumer Act in terms of transparency, you know, requiring proof of the source of the dog or cat, um, our ability to enforce against that, um, uh, things of those natures. Um, and then the other reason is, is that, you know, 
the actual prohibition also talks about other transfer. And so sometimes, you know, PetSmart or Petco or whatever it may be, it's not a sale, but it's technically an other transfer. So they're not donating it, they're not bartering for it. And so that other transfer is to try and capture those okay. cracks if, or gaps. If that's what that's for, then, then that's fine. I, I just, this, this seems like something that someone could exploit to me. I, I just, but I also understand that you want, if, if a PetSmart happens to pop up here, you're, you're going to want to let them do their thing with, with the adoption of the animals. I, I understand that. So I guess it's all right. <laughs> um, and, and to address your other concern, you know, if, if the commission here today doesn't feel that they're ready to make a decision, you know, we are happy to do the research, answer some of the questions that have been posed today, posed today and come back on the 22nd with um, a little bit more clarification, some additional revisions, um, you know, further discussion on the NC district item, you know, it, it's not something that needs to be done today. There, yes, there is a permit application in place. That being said, even if an ordinance passed today, that permit application, if they chose to move forward, would be grandfathered in and non-conforming use. Yep, so we would ha that would come before us again and we'd have to approve a non-conforming use based off of a, a grandfathering in for the most part, right? Well, they already have the application in. So it doesn't matter. Correct. Okay. I just didn't know if we would be allowed to do that since we've already gone through a public comment and- Oh, and, absolutely, and yes. You would be able to table this um, to a date certain okay. so that uh, staff and, and legal can do additional research. Okay. Um, as, when it comes to the uh, definition of an animal rescue organization, um, did anybody contact Humane Society South Platte Valley to see if they fit this? Uh, no. Do you know if you do, if they do? I do not know. They do, because they are a 501c3, but they're, I just, that's the, that's like basically where our, that they're our pound even, I think. That's where the, the Littleton police take, take, take our animals that are running stray. So they need to be, I, I need to communicate with them to make sure that they're okay with this. Just, okay. Okay. <laughs> just, uh, that's the biggest organization in the, at least in, in Littleton that I'm aware of. Um, I'm a, bit concerned a little bit just because of there could be smaller rescue a lot of very small rescue organizations tend to run out of somebody's house for the most part or, or several houses when they're when they're starting up and doing and doing things and they may not have this designation yet I am not 100% sure if they would have that 501c3 yet so I don't know if that's a that would be an issue I just don't I'm, I'm not probably aware enough to know if that's that's really an issue I would think that you would, if you want to get into that, you're going to get that as soon as you possibly can. But um, um, the uh, the numbers of pets. I mean, that's a. I don't know. It, 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 ducks seems like a very strange thing to be in there. I, I I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else. I I don't know if we could we should consider maybe removing that and putting it in the, the agriculture more to, more more vain um, but uh, anyway that's I think five is a more appropriate number than three anyway but that's just my personal opinion um, so anyway I think that's oh do uh, the definitions or, or for animal rescue organizations and the like is there any limit of the number of animals that they can have or is there any like space, like some sort of ratio as far as like this is how much space you need per animal or what have you? I know that it's governed by statute. I'd have to dig in further into what those regulations are that the that would statute be a state says. Level mm -hmm. statute. Yes. Okay. That's so, my the, but there is a regulation out there. Is, I have okay. not. I will be honest. I have not looked through the entire facilities, the Pet Care Facilities Animal Act, but I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I can look into that though. Okay. Um, I, I just. Uh, am, that's more of a curiosity thing. I just don't know if there's a, a limit to the number that they can have. Or, I'm guessing there's probably a square footage requirement I that would they need. So. Um, the uh, yeah, I think that's that's sort of all I've got. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah, I had just a a couple of uh, 
questions. One, one might be kind of a technical question on the, the public notice uh, for, for this meeting. Um, appreciate the idea of maybe considering adding, uh, you know, veterinary clinics that do not have outside boarding. However, you know, changes to the land development code or the ULUC would, would need to be advertised with proper public notice. And is that within even the scope of what the notice was because we were focused purely on retail animal sales? It was for Title 10. And so, so Title 10 generally. So yes. if we wanted to, theoretically, we could change the rules on accessory dwelling units or make a recommendation there on tonight? It was Title 10 related to Okay. to dogs and cats. Just, okay. Related to dogs and cats. So I, I'm not sure I see that as being related to a veterinary hospital in terms of notification. But uh, if it's up for discussion, it's up for discussion. Um, the other thing I had a question about was how did kind of, the, if staff could walk through the process of arriving at the recommendation of five, because one thing I observed in all of the other communities is that they placed a limit on a single species or on dogs. And I think that's an important distinction in terms of the number, because dogs as a pet have a much you know, wider variety, come in a wider variety of sizes than say a cat or a duck. Um, you know, if somebody in my neighborhood, which has around 7,000 square foot lots, had five Irish wolfhounds uh, next door, that would be an appalling number of Irish wolfhounds <laughs> for that size of, of a lot. So just hoping you could walk us through, you know, you know where, how we arrived there. An average, sir. I will be 100% honest. Um, right. You know, we did not look into the square footage of these items. If it's something that uh, this commission wants to take a look at to cap at a specific breed, you know, we're happy to take a look at that and come back with something, as I mentioned um, to Commissioner Radulovich, that, you know, this is not, um, from our perspective, it's not a pressing ordinance that needs to happen right now. We do not have any other pending applications. And from what, what I understand um, is that there has been no movement on this previous application since August of last year. Um, and I do not believe any of the planning staff have had communications with the applicant. Um, and as a kind of a, a preface, it's the owner who has contracted with this tenant, and it is the tenant who is intending to bring this pet store. And so I'm not aware if the owner has changed their mind and they're going to have another tenant use in, in the area. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but with regard to the comment, so initially in October of 2023, when the comment was made, it was it was really just a quick reference that you know let's take a look at the numbers, survey what other municipalities are doing, um, and so you know we ought, like we opted to increase it to five. But if it's something that we want to take a look at in terms of capping at breeds, like Superior is very specific, um, you know, happy to do that. Um, not an issue. Uh, I would just ask that you know, planning staff and myself do a little bit of research um, to see if we can issue spot. And, uh, and just as a note on that one, um, in terms of enforcement, you know, generally in terms of enforcement, we're not going to go door knocking and say, "Let me count how many fish you have." Um, it's it's really going to be if there's a danger or some type of nuisance, you know, or you know. Um, odor smells along those lines where you're going to have code compliance officers go out or the police department go out and say we need to check and you know if it's if it's something there might likely be another violation that's there but this is something that we could potentially enforce on it's just that it's not a proactive enforcement generally appreciate that um are there any other additional questions for staff So at this time, then, I would call for a motion and a second, either to approve the resolution or if there is more information that you know, this body would like to seek from staff, uh, perhaps a delay to a date certain in, at the next meeting. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll spare my personal thoughts until we have a motion. <laughs> um, I would move to uh, delay this to a date certain so that we can 
probably talk about this a little bit more in depth as a group. That's, that's my personal feeling on it. That's not a real motion. Um, <laughs> I, we, we would need a date. Um, let me pull up the tentative calendar. Should we uh, call for a recess so that maybe I can ponder my words a little bit more and, carefully? Yeah, and the more direction we can give to staff as well on sort of the specifics that we're looking for, I think the, the more helpful it will be if ultimately we do propose a, a delay. So, Certainly. Uh, would five minutes be sufficient? All right, so I will... Uh, Planning Commission will be in recess for five minutes until 8, 10 p.m. to allow us to collect our thoughts.
We are one minute tardy with uh, ending the recess and restarting the meeting. It is now 8, 11 p.m. And uh, when we were last speaking, it was, uh, I was seeking a, a motion and a second, either for approval of the resolution or uh, if we are proposing a uh, delay with direction to staff on what the topics we'd like more information about. So given that uh, we've had a lot of discussion and questions on this topic. Um, I move to continue the public hearing for PC resolution uh, 02-2024 to a date certain of February 12th. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion with, uh, uh, by Rudulovic uh, and Commissioner Coronado seconded. Discussion. First. Um, given that this is being driven by council or by a council member, um, and we're just in an advisory role here, uh, you know, we're, we're not actually enacting this ordinance or changing the land use. We're just recommending council do their, do enact the ordinance or not. We can also recommend they deny it. Um, I. I feel like this is almost more a political question than an actual land use question. And um, I feel it's almost out of our wheelhouse, you know, our expertise in how many pressa canaria are appropriate versus uh, fish or ducks in a yard. These are areas that, you know, we're, we're straying into stuff that's really not the, a great example of the purview of a planning commission. Um, we're going to ultimately be making up numbers five pets, three pets. They become arbit they're arbitrary in origin in our code. Three right now is a ridiculous number that there are hundreds of households in violation, breaking our land use code right now. To me, like council's request that that be fixed is a very simple and logical one. Um, all we are doing here is picking a new number, five, but it means we don't have a lot of illegal households. Um, and all we're doing is recommending the council just adopt this quickly so that we don't have code compliance officers called in a household with four dogs. Um, these are kind of simple and ridiculous things. I, I guess I want to know really what new great information we expect to have arrive in February that will really elucidate and make our, our decision that much better when it's really just an advisory one. Um, it's also, to me, this is a political um, question, more than a land use question. This is, do we want cats and dogs sold in pet re retail stores? That's kind of like a, it's, it's what's animating a lot of the audience. It's what's going to ultimately animate state legislation that will do this statewide. Um, we're working community by community to ban retail sales of dogs and cats particularly. And that's very much just a political question. I mean, I don't, Love, I think Tim's point, uh, Commissioner Neely's points about is this really a land use uh, code element? I think this is landing on our and our wheelhouse because this is the simplest, most elegant way to to do that locally. And I think, but it's really ultimately a political leadership has asked staff to bring this forward, and and it has to come to us first, and we're gonna do our machination on it and recommend. And ultimately, I think council wants to see this happen. So uh, a ban on dog and cat sales. That just seems like a very logical thing that one animal-centered member of council could drive and want to see happen. So I don't see our role as really that critical here. And um, I guess I'm just hesitant to postpone to a date certain because I'm not feeling like that's going to bring a great deal of elucidation to the question. Um, and I think given that this is an advisory recommendation to council that we should just move it up to them and let them make the call on these questions. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I'm fine with waiting to February and doing this all over again, but we'll have another long session with many animal uh, concerned citizens coming and doing another, probably more even, to make sure that we do the right thing in February. Uh, hearing a lot of the same things, spending another hour, and it just seems like, is that is that a really good use of the planning commission's time and, and, and our focus? So th I have Sorry. all these questions, and I'd, I'd really love to hear what exactly the information we're going to get 
in February is that will be make this such a, a better decision process. Thanks. Commissioner Santana, just a quick correction. If we were to continue to a date certain, there would not, uh, public invited to be heard would not be allowed at uh, the February 12th date. Uh, yeah, I, I also yeah, just like to reiter reiterate that, uh, yeah, I, I think this is limited in scope from a, from a land use perspective and I'd like to get, you know, have our time be used for more for issues that are more directed towards uh, the intent of this uh, commission. So I, I think for me, um, yeah, I'm ready to get this back to city council and uh, let them, you know, you know, provide our advice and um, move on. Mr. Carnot? Yeah, I tend to agree with Commissioner Radulovich that it would have been nice to have a study session on this or at least some heads up beforehand um, so we were able to uh, familiarize yourself with the ourselves with the issue before making what I think is an important decision um, I frankly didn't hear anything about it till I opened my packet on Friday so I had no idea this was coming um, and even though I've done some research on it uh, I don't feel I feel like I have more questions than than answers um, I, I think one of the, the main questions that I would ask staff to investigate and if, if we do agree to a date certain is could a reputable breeder set up shop in Littleton to sell dogs and cats if this was enacted um, under this ordinance and, and what would the conditions be that they could do that um, and I think it goes to you know what a reputable breeder is how big a property they need, uh, what the rules are for for that, which I, I just don't really understand, would like to have a little bit more understanding of. Yeah, I think I'm more in the camp of uh, Commissioner Santana and Neely that this, uh, you know, our, we're here tonight to uh, advise council um, and they've asked for, <laughs> they've asked for this, so. Um, I would vote in favor of, of just pushing it up to them. Uh, so my initial reason for doing this is because I thought we were going to get 10,000 amendments to it. And um, when I, like Commissioner Santana, Commissioner Neely, Commissioner Miller, most likely, when, we, when I opened this as well, I was like, this doesn't seem like something we should be even involved with to be perfectly honest so um if there's not going to be ten thousand amendments i am all for uh pushing this to council and and making this their decision all right i appreciate the the comment <laughs> um I, if we do get to a motion to recommend approval i will probably have one amendment which i may have tipped my hand on regarding the irish wolfhounds <laughs> um, but one, one thing that uh, I, th I feel like we do have enough to go on to make a recommendation uh, this evening. I too am on team, uh, would have been nice to have a study session uh, about this because it, it did generate a lot of questions from, from the planning commission. Um, the, the, other, the other factor that where I'm leaning towards making a recommendation is that uh, there is currently no moratorium in place uh, regarding pet stores in Littleton. So, uh, in, and I'll ask the attorney to correct me if I'm wrong in, in this statement, but theoretically, somebody who wanted to operate a pet store could take a business license to the city tomorrow and request to operate a pet store. So there is a, there is a certain amount of urgency since we do not have a, a moratorium in place. And I, for the record, uh, the attorney nodded. <laughs> Apologies, yes, you're correct. <laughs> um, so that's uh, sort of in, in the, yeah, what's going on in the back of my mind. Um, and, and I will say that I, I may have a little more experience with this uh, than, than some of the other members of the Planning Commission because in my day job, uh, one of my direct reports is uh, the person who's in charge of animal services. So I'm aware of some of the issues with PACFA and some of the issues, even with breeders who are not necessarily running 
puppy mills in the state of Colorado. So, you know, I, I really understand where uh, the, the folks who are speaking about that are, are coming from this evening. So I, I guess that's a really <laughs> long-winded way of saying that I, I won't support the, the, res the proposal to do the continuance, even though I, I, I really would have appreciated a study session as well. With that, I, I'll call for a vote. Uh, Chair uh, Reynolds, yes. if I may, um, if we don't feel their support for this motion, we can withdraw the motion with Commissioner Radulovich's and Coronado's approval versus taking a vote unless you'd like to take a vote. I, I am willing to withdraw my, my motion. And I'm willing to second that. Okay. Uh, appreciate that, Clerk. That keeps things simple, seeing as we have an even number this evening, too. And, and one more thing, when it comes to the vote, Commissioner Coronado, we have moved you in the system to Chair 3, so when it comes to voting, if you could just move over there. Thank you. <laughs> if not, do it from there and we'll fix it. Thanks. So with that, that motion uh, withdrawn, um, I will call for a, another motion. Uh, I propose to approve Littleton Planning Commission Resolution 02-2024, re recommending approval to City Council amendments to Title 10 of the Littleton City Code regarding prohibition of retail sales of certain domestic animals, dogs and cats. All right, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Santana, uh, second by Commissioner Miller. Um, any discussion or, uh, or amendments on this one? Um, no amendments. Um, just a few comments. Uh, Humane Society, South Platte Valley has 20 dogs and two cats right now. Uh, Denver Dumbs Friends League has 70 dogs and 22 cats. Table Mountain has 20 dogs and six cats. And I can, I, one of my stress reliefs at my job is I will go on the Denver Dumb Friends League website to look at the dogs that are there. <laughs> and um, I have seen it reach as high as 132 dogs in that facility. So there are plenty of animals to adopt and I would encourage anyone to adopt them. I've adopted two dogs myself. My last one was from the Humane Society of South Platte Valley. Gypsy we've had for seven years, and um, I will be supporting this motion. Um, I, would, I would presume that council will also review our uh, session this evening and maybe hear some of our questions and comments and uh, maybe uh, we'll see how they proceed, but um, I will be supporting this this, this evening. Uh, yeah, I really don't have anything further. I would support to the question for council that I read in the last motion was, um, you know, could a reputable breeder set up shop in Littleton w under this ordinance? I would hope so. Um, and not necessarily a, a, a rescue organization, but a, a reputable breeder. Um, there's a market for that. <laughs> so. uh, just a quick thanks to everyone that came and to all the thought that's been put into this from the staff. I just want to confirm that we're going to be recommending five. The change, the change that's going forward in this is up, up, upping the limit of pets to five. Okay. I think there is a larger conversation here, but I, I, I do feel that we're best in the business of not getting too involved in regulation. And um, the, the three is too low. Maybe there's a better number than five. I, I ho hope council will be the ones to make that call or think about it. Um, I don't feel any great expertise. You could argue seven or eight. Um, maybe this, maybe it's a limit of five mammals. You know, there's all versus reptiles, you know, <laughs> all kinds of ways you can spin this one. But um, I do think at the minimum we should be changing the, the rules about cat and dog sales right away so that we don't have trip on this in the short term horizon of applicants coming forward. And uh, I think five is a better number than three. Beyond that, um, I don't think there is an easy set of solutions, um, but I'm glad to just let council make the call on this and, and move on to other stuff. 
So I'll be voting in support. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And um, yeah, I, I will. Uh, I will actually be proposing an amendment uh, at this point. Uh, I would move to amend the motion to limit the number of dogs when counting total number of pets to no more than three. Um, as, as I mentioned, many of the lots in Littleton are relatively small. Some dog breeds are large and can, uh, can have an outsized impact on these neighborhoods that are filled with smaller lots. And, uh, you know, as someone, and this is speaking as someone with a dog owner, I have two dogs since we're divulging that. Uh, one, one from the Dumb Friends League, a Whippet, the other from a reputable, reputable breeder of Whippets. So, uh, two is probably enough dog for my particular small lot. So if anyone's willing to second, uh, appreciate it. If not, uh, we've had the discussion and my concerns are on the record. <laughs> Right. The motion to amend, uh, apparently we are uh, Team Irish Wolfhound, um, <laughs> dies for lack of a second. Uh, with, with that, uh, I, I will be supporting the main motion. I, I do think this, you know, we, we received some very compelling testimony tonight. Um, I, I have uh, experienced where, say, a, a Petco or PetSmart does have the Dumb Friends League, you know, special adoption days, and it appears that the ordinance uh, will accommodate those. So, appreciate all the discussion tonight and uh, all the testimony we had this evening. So, with that, I'll call for a vote. The vote is six in favor. The motion carries. All right. Um, again, uh, thank you everyone who did come out to speak regarding this item uh, and take their, their time on, uh, for those who care about football, the national championship evening. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have not looked at my phone to check the score, despite one of those being my alma mater. Uh, so I would ask uh, for reports uh, from the community development director, if any. Maybe not director, but from uh, community development <laughs> staff. Absolutely, we do have a, an update. Um, the uh, city of Littleton has published the position, or is um, seeking a candidate for the community development director position. So we are uh, utilizing a search for that and hope to you know, have someone to fill that position here in the near future. Um, also, uh, Deputy Director uh, Sutherland's last day was uh, was last week, so uh, he is no longer with. Um, I am currently acting planning manager, so if you do have any um, questions of the planning department, you can uh, send them my way. Happy to be of service. Um, and then, as I mentioned, yeah, we're we're looking forward to filling the director position, and then the director will most likely have input on any uh, other hiring, such as deputy director, uh, that possibility. So, thank you. That concludes my report. Uh, any other uh, staff announcements? I did skip over the cl clerk at the last meeting, so apologies. Uh, I did have a, a clarification. I know that we discussed but uh, potentially adding veterinary clinics uh, within the NC district. Is that something that you would like staff, for, staff to follow up on with ULUC amendments coming forward this year? Yes, I, I mean, my, my one hesitation about not having it talked to, de dealt with tonight is that we tend to not get conversations about those, when we're making table changes, if it's not in the agenda area, like we're doing ADUs, we never get back to it. So it's good to do those when we're actually focused on a zone. But uh, I think if we can rely on you to make sure that when we do the ULUC and, and land use map discussions in the spring and, and summer, that it get put in there, that would really be good. Yeah. I hired staff to take notes for me tonight, so it's on their list. <laughs> right. And maybe a, a more general suggestion, if this would be okay with 
you know, counsel is, um, or yeah, the attorney is, if, um, you know, if, if there are other things that, you know, in, in our look at the use tables that, you know, we'd like to consider staff looking at, and I see someone. If I, if I yep. may, I apologize. My, I know I said my comments were concluded. <clears throat> However, uh, one correction from earlier in the evening. Uh, the city council will be discussing just ULUC kind of priorities and setting out some of the priorities for staff to look into at the uh, January 23rd rather than 16th meeting. That has been pushed back a meeting. So just wanted to let you know that that is proposed to occur and staff uh, is planning to kind of lay out um, a pathway for, for doing an update that would be a little different from the last year. So trying to get in front of it a little bit more and not have quite as much public comment at a, uh, at a short period of time, but have a few more opportunities in a little longer time frame to make comments. Okay, so certainly an opportunity to review what council's priorities are if you're not busy on the 23rd. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if I may, in the past we've had some joint sessions with council and boy, I'd love to see those, you know, especially as part of the ULUC update to have that opportunity again to discuss some of the priorities, just to pass that along. Uh, if I may also, in addition to that, um, a part of the conversation will certainly be the comments that were taken from the joint meeting, the joint study session between Plan Commission and the Housing Task Force. So we absolutely uh, took those into account and we'll be taking them to Plan Commission, or to City Council, but uh, point well taken. Um, we'll look into uh, scheduling some more time in the future. If I may, um, that is something that Council is looking at this year, is some joint meetings with um, several of the quasi-judicial boards, Planning Commission among them. We just don't have dates yet. All right, thank you. Any items from members of the Planning Commission? All right. And uh, I have nothing to contribute this evening, so. Oh, I would sorry. just like to say one thing. I, I, that was the first time I heard that Mike Sutherland was gone, and I just wanted to say we really appreciated his leadership in the uh, group for, for years. Uh, it was a pleasure working with him, so. I'll reach out to him on my own to thank him as well. No, no, I really appreciate that. I agree. Yeah. So with no further business, we are adjourned at 8.34 p.m.